In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Feels like it's warm inside, isn't it? Vicky, do you think you can just adjust the thermostat to go to cool? This is not what we expected for a Christmas evening, but it is a little hot inside. Wish you all a blessed and Merry Christmas and glad that you came in today a little early and so at night go to bed early and uh, you know celebrate this time together with your families. A lady lost her handbag in the bustle of Christmas shopping. Then it was found by an honest little boy and that was returned to her. Looking in her purse, she commented, hmm. That's funny. When I lost my bag, there was a $20 bill in my bag. Now there are 20 $1 bills because this boy brought it back, the bill, you know. So the boy quickly replied, that's right, lady. The last time I found the lady's purse, she didn't have any change for a reward. <laughs> I thought, well, that's good. So he was very prudent and how he wants to bring the purse back, being honest as well. All right, if we adopted a child of another race, you and your family will stand out in public. Particularly when your child is of a different race, people look at you strangely, you will be conspicuous. I know cases when white couple adopt black children, or even black couple adopt white children, people look at you like, where in the world did you steal that child from? Because we don't, you know, it's difficult to hide these differences. Um, being noticed in public when you least expect to be noticed is a very uncomfortable thing for a lot of people. So Mary and Joseph had no plan to become the spectacle when they got to Bethlehem. That was not in their plan at all. All they wanted was to simply blend in, get their business done, and return home. But God had a different plan that they were not privy to. So Joseph and Mary's trip to Bethlehem, quietly doing the stuff and return home, did not work out as they planned. That sounds very much like God, isn't it? We plan things and God does things very differently. God always has a plan we are not privy to and then we don't know what to do with these absolutely new situations that we land in. Some of us throw a fit and others just give up and few others cooperate with God and they take one day at a time. For example, when you get a COVID test done and come out with COVID on Christmas Eve. You don't know what to do with it. We have somebody, you know, Mandy Lynch, just came out with COVID yesterday. That was the, not the plan for the weekend. So please remember her in your prayers. When someone dies on January 1st, that's not what you are expecting that day to be, but then we still have to phase up. Or there is something wonderful, funny that I read. A mother was totally embarrassed on a Christmas shopping because her little baby threw up all over in the mall. What do you do? These are situations we have to take one day, one day at a time, once at a time. I think if Mary and Joseph were Episcopalians, <laughs> let's think about that for a second. If these two were Episcopalians, they would cringe at the attention they got. They would say, geez, we were hoping to just hop in and hop out. Didn't expect all the hoopla about the baby that was just born. We wanted to simply register our names and get out of the way and back into our corner of the world and speak some smart and intelligent things about our journey. Something like, our little baby was born in Bethlehem. We have the christening of the child coming up, and that was the end of it. So this is totally unexpected. Instead, there is a bunch of shepherds in the stable. They are curious to know what is it going to be here anymore. 
Then there comes a few strangely dressed people claiming to be the wise men or the kings from the east or people who heard about the birth of Jesus. What's going on in here? Who are all these people and what have they to do with this baby or why are they paying attention to me? Can you please leave us alone and we would like to just slip in and slip out? I think if you think of Mary and Joseph and how quiet as people they were, if I am in their place, I would have that feeling. We all want to be important, but then not sure how to be important or how to take it when somebody pays attention. We want to be noticed, but not become conspicuous. We want people to recognize us, but not in the way that it makes a big noise about it. And then there are many of us who feel simply not important at all, no matter what happens in life. We all feel like inconspicuous many times, especially when we go through hard times and we feel like no one knows what is going on with our lives. Nobody cares and many times feels like we are alone in our plight without anyone walking along with us. But the truth is, even if you are alone, even if we are alone in the manger, all by ourselves, we are conspicuous. We are unique for God, just exactly as it happened to Mary and Joseph. Every time you feel like no one understands you, remember there are angels singing praises of God for the potential that you bring into this world by just being born in this world in the place that you were born. When you were born, I want to assure you, God was hopeful for the world to be a better place because of you. I believe that about me. I believe that about each one of you, God thought this world will be a better place because you are born. And that was the hope for each and every one of us. Jesus was put on the spot and he had to grow up into that expectation that God had on him. And I want to say he did grow up into that expectation, not any other way that he was a normal human being, regular human being like any one of us, but then he grew into what ex expected of him. We are put in this, in this part today, in this world today for a reason, just like Jesus was. And we are expected to grow into what God hopes for us. This is why I insist that parents bring their children to church for worship and community experience. Because through all of that, they are going to grow into what God expects them to be. We live in a mobile society. I have, we move from place to place, and I have moved 37 times in 57 years. That's a lot of moving. We are scattered. We are scattered from one place to another. We are scattered as families and friends because life has taken us unexpectedly to places and people we least expected. That's why I'm here and that's why you are here and you may not be here later sometime. We keep moving. We are a mobile society. As if this mobility is not enough, we all carry the technology of the mobility with us wherever we go. That is our nature. We are a nomadic community. That's why we all gather here today. I'm sure none of you wanted to leave the comfort of your home and be part of a world where you had to find your place and your home. But you found it, or you are finding it every single day. We are all like Jesus, immigrated into our current home, our current church, and our current community. And noticed by the world around us. We immigrated into this church community and being noticed for it. We need to be like the donkey and the cow or the animals in the stable accepting and welcoming Jesus. Mary and Joseph who invaded 
into their space. Joseph and Mary and Jesus invaded the space of these poor animals. And they made it their home. I wish our wisdom gives us the grace to know life is what most important is as we are. Life is most important and that's all around us. Christmas is the day when animals and humans realize none of us are strangers in the heart of God. We all share the DNA with God and sharing in his life and in his future. So today, I want to invite you to recognize that you may think you are not unique or conspicuous because there were no angels or stars, wise men or others when you were born. God did not want any more drama around us. We can make it all on our own. <laughs> but then there were angels and there were expectations and hopes when we were born. What he wanted us to make our lives significant is enough, just like Jesus, so that the world will know we cannot be ignored or sidelined by the powers of the world that destroys another. So we are in the place we are simply because God has a reason for us to be here. And that is to empower and transform the people around us just as much as we are changed. So believe this, you are the beloved of God, seen by God, just like Jesus was, and you are important to God to the extent that he gave his, sent his only son so that we all become sons and daughters of God. And we are nothing more and nothing less. Sons and daughters of God. And when I think about that, I'm comforted in my difficult times and dark moments, that I'm still loved and cared for by God through everything that happens. And believe, no matter what has happened to you in the past, what might happen to you in the future, you are still the beloved of God for an eternity carved in his palms. And that is the place for you, and that is the place for Christ, that's the place for Jesus. Let us celebrate our uniqueness in God. Wish you all a blessed and Merry Christmas. Amen. Amen.